our last devotional, we learned that we're in a love relationship with God. And so today, I want to help us know and learn how to foster and fellowship with God. Now, we all have family members and friends, and, and we know that the best way to get close to them is by spending time and, and energy and giving our hearts to those relationships. There's nothing different with our relationship with God. It's the same thing. We have to spend time with God, give Him our energy, our hearts, and just open up to God. So every relationship is a two-way street, too. It's a give and take. God has His role. We have our role. We foster and strengthen our love relationship with God by giving Him our time and opening up our hearts. And like any relationship, uh, it grows stronger and healthier over that time. The word fellowship or communion in the Bible has to do with, uh, has a meaning to do with sharing life with one another. So to fellowship with God is to share your life with Him and He shares His life with you. Through this spiritual communion or fellowship with God, we are one and that relationship can only grow stronger and healthier and uh, you actually won't need to feel close to God. You'll actually know you're close to God. That's what's so cool about fostering that relationship with Him. The greatest commandment in the Bible is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. It's Matthew 22, 37. One of the first ways we can give God all of our heart, soul, and mind is through personal relationship with Him. So where do we begin? Well, I'm, I'm beginning with this assumption that God is present, that God is available, and He wants me to be with Him. He wants to be in relationship with me. So I just need to show up and be in His presence, to be aware of His presence in my life. And one of my favorite examples in the Bible is found in Luke 10, 38 through 42. This is what it says. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed Him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Maybe that sounds familiar with some of your siblings growing up. Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, this is what Jesus said, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. What's amazing about this story is the, the Lord of the universe, the Savior of the world, Jesus, is at Mary's house and Martha's house. I mean, he has made himself available to them. They have all this alone time to get to know him, and he's taken the time to be with them. And Martha is worried about the dinner and being a good host, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But Mary decides to stop everything and be at the feet of Jesus and hear his heart and learn who he is. I love this story because I can relate to it. Some days I'm like Mary, some days I'm like Martha. Some days I'm good or depending on the week, um, I slow down and I hang out with, with God the right way. And some days I'm just too busy with all the things I have to do and I'm more like Martha. The reality is Martha was missing out, Mary wasn't. And uh, I don't want to miss out on what God has for me. I want to be in his presence. I want to be at his feet. But you may be thinking, okay, Ryan, um, Jesus isn't literally coming to my house to see me face to face. And you're right. It's actually even better. Jesus goes with you everywhere you go. As we learned a couple weeks ago, the Holy Spirit is like having the presence of Jesus with us. So it doesn't matter where you are, you can actually hang out in his presence. And I have a few tips, a few ways that I do that personally. And the first one is I get alone. We are so busy in our world, there's so much going on that one of the most important steps in, in fellowship with God is to literally stop everything in your life and get alone with Him and literally get away from other people, turn off things in your life. Maybe it's Netflix or you know, putting your cell phone away and, and getting with God so that you can get ready to read the Bible and talk to Him. So I want to encourage you, the first thing you do, even after this video today, is make, make an appointment with God, so to say. Make time to, to really get along with Him. The second thing is, is the Bible. Mary, Mary did what I want to do. 
I want to hear from God. I want to hear the heart of God. And so I read and reflect on the words of the Bible. The Bible is God's way of speaking into our lives. If God were to meet you at a coffee shop, he would probably ask you a bunch of questions like Jesus did in the Bible. And he would tell stories that would teach lessons like parables. And he would tell you about the kingdom of God. Okay, he would share all these things with you. So what we need to know about God is already in the Bible. And one of the things I do is I start with the beginning of a book like Matthew, and I read through it until I finish that book. And in, in that time, I grab a journal and a, and a pen, and I underline scriptures that I love, and I'll write down scriptures or, or lessons I've learned, and then even things that I can obey and apply to my life. So that's the second thing you can do. The first thing is get alone. The second thing is, is read the Bible, reflect on it, let it dwell in your heart and mind and find a ways to apply it. But what you're doing is you're trying to hear God's heart. You're trying to let God speak to you by listening. And the third thing is where we get to do all the talking and that's prayer. So talking to God is prayer and you can do that anywhere. You can go for a drive, just make sure you keep your eyes open. You can go for a walk. Um, you can be in your house cleaning and talking to God, even though I think it's better to slow down and, and, and not, but you can talk to God at any time. And I get real with God. I, I tell him how I'm feeling. I tell him about my worries and my fears, but I really love to start my prayer with Thanksgiving. I love to thank God for all he's done for me. And then I like to talk about uh, and, and bring up requests that other people have. So I like to pray for other people. People come to me with prayer requests or there's needs in my family or my friends. So I'll, I'll talk to God and, and ask for, for help for their needs. And then I'll tell God about my personal needs, my personal worries and fears and things that, um, that are on my heart. And so I've done that on drives. I've gone to parks and, and I've walked. I've even just parked my car in a place alone and where I can just be real with him. So that's three ways that you can fellowship with God. And what happens is as you fellowship with him, you become more uh, one and in unity with him. And you get to know him and he gets to know you, although he already knows all about you, but you have this relationship and you fall more in love with him. He already loves you as much as he's gonna love you. You're, you're the one, I'm the one that falls more in love with him and you end up having this beautiful, close relationship with him. So I wanna encourage you, start with the first one. You're gonna fellowship with God. He's already waiting for you. Get alone with him and then open your Bibles and then talk to him and pray. And let's pray about that. God, we thank you that, uh, that you are available and that you want to fellowship with us. And we thank you, God, that you are accessible. No matter where we are, we can be in your presence. God, I pray you would help us to be aware of that, that we would also take the initiative and be intentional about getting alone. And God, even lead us in your word, in the Bible. Show us where we should read, or even if it's starting in the beginning of the Bible and finishing to the end, or just a different book. God, I pray you would lead us in that and speak to us through your word. Give us ears to hear what you have to say. And we also come to you and talk to you as a friend and as our Lord and our Savior, our God. We bring all of our burdens to you. We bring our thanksgiving and all requests to you because you hear us and you love to take care of our needs. So we thank you for that. Draw us closer to you in our time with you. In Jesus' name, amen.